So if I move over this way, maybe the camera can follow so that you can see both sides of this at the same time. Um, I don't know if the camera can do that. Let's see. Or maybe i got to move this thing. Which There we go. So you can see the both sides of this thing. God is in the process of making a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? In the biggest picture of this thing, which is really interesting... When you, there's so many words like sun and moon and stars, and these are all things that are representing things in the heavenlies. These are, and these are unseen. These are the hidden things. They're the inward. They are in us. Okay. To a large extent, this is where people you know, get into possession. You know, you get into this whole concept of, you know, people can be infiltrated by unholy, very unholy and unclean. And rebellious things that are out there. That's the day. People can't actually hibernize. See, this isn't going on. This is what the Bible's talking about. There has been great hibernization that has gone on by, by Satan as he has combined, <laughs> oh my gosh, different um, parts of the, the uh, terrestrial creation with certain parts of the celestial creation. I mean, it's really not that hard to do if you know what you're doing. We are doing genetic hybridization today. I mean, in the plant kingdom, in the animal kingdom. And, you know, beyond the radar, it's, it has to be happening in a spiritual dimension. Look, watch the movie. See, see, if you really, it's kind of fun now in a lot of ways. If you begin, Once you begin to understand what's going on and watch the movies and the things going on today, they are so in your face about it. But people are getting smart. We need to get smart. But we need to understand something. See, so on a dime, God is going to change. When Jesus came, he brought the most important force in the whole universe. <laughs> we, we work out of a, what I, a friend of mine calls the Morning Star Administration, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that all work in tandem. They are totally above and beyond all of this. Okay? Woo! Way up here. This is called the, the Most High Throne Room of God. This is all part of his creation. And if you read the story of Genesis, this is what was going on. A lot of these things were being created on the first day, second day, third day, fourth day. All this kind of stuff. It's all there. This is why the Kabbalah, it's all the hidden. This is a hidden understanding. Because if you really, I've said this before, when you study it out, you get to the end of Genesis 1 and the beginning of Genesis 2. And it tells you right there, if you really work the words in the Hebrew, that this is all the sons of God. God has a lot of sons. Okay? <sighs> But the thing is, we, it got corrupted. Satan fell, and he has been in a war with God, and he has been doing his best to muck you up in all sorts of categories and ways and make the life of the people of God. He said in Genesis, there would always be an enmity, which is a word hatred, which is a word that kind of means a warring against the seed of the woman, which is the Adamic seed of the man, and the seed of the serpent. Seed, genetics. Um, reproduction. In Genesis, people were always told, they were told, you do not reproduce outside of your kind. This And this is something we just don't, you know, we gloss or we don't understand. That is one of the, and this is the whole concept in, you know, the, the oral Torah, the whole thing about forbidden mixtures. This is so much of the typology that Moses was doing. This is what so much of the, the temple sacrificing and worshiping and the understanding, the deep understanding is, is what was going on. He was, he was in types and shadows and images. He was doing what was going on and making atonement and cleansing. The temple of God on the earth, the priesthood of God has always been, always been the force that God has used to, to, to work forgiveness and mercy and compassion and covering for all the mess that's been going on okay but like i said there is going to be an end game now enoch i want to go to this because the garments this is what i want to get to there's always a sense of it's a covering and so when any of these spiritual forces come into manifestation okay they usually take on a garment a covering they come they they have to uh come in as something, okay? You don't just, I mean, if you're going to show up on earth where, where things are matter, things are, you got to see them and touch them, taste them, you got to be something to see. Does that, I hope that makes sense to people, okay? So that's why we are earthen vessels. We have this tent, this tabernacle, this temple of God, but inside of us, the real deal, inside of us, 
is the most powerful stuff in the universe. And now when Jesus came, he died. He was the sacrificial. He was the ultimate propitiation payment for the, for the mess that had been made. Okay? It's amazing when you understand these on so many levels. That blood what his, went onto the mercy seat, went to the altar of God, and it covered. It covered. It's done. Anyone now can enter in to a whole new state of being, a whole new creation. This is the point where you can be cleansed completely and totally, and not only cleansed, because they were cleansed in the Old Testament. They have atonement every year. They were covered. It was fine. Their sins were forgiven. It was a very good covenant. And, but what God always said and what they always looked for and they always try to see is that God was going to do something better. He was going to do something really much more cagey, much more exciting and better. That's what the prophets, they always desired to look into in this last two days that we're in, okay? And we have one more day to go, the third day, which will make seven, which makes a typology, okay? But the garments. He's going to change us. This is the whole point of the resurrection now. It's all done because Jesus came. He made a way for us to be completely, he brought new genetics. See, when he went up to heaven and put, then the Holy Spirit could come down totally above this. The Holy Spirit of God, the seed of God, the true genetic could come down now and enter with new creation into our earthly being and our heavenly being, our celestial nature, our soul, our spirit now, and we could become completely new. Now we're waiting for the manifestation of this thing. And he says, like seed in the ground. This is the thing. It's been growing all this time. Even Satan can't really, I'm sure he hasn't really been able to figure this whole thing, where it's growing and what it's going to look like and what its potency is going to be. You know, they do say that as the seed comes up through the earth, it's one of the most powerful forces for that little seed to break its shell and to come up through the earth and burst up through the sky. It's like the idea of a woman when she is having that baby, that baby coming through the birth. That is the most powerful force on the planet. Um, that when this thing is manifested, what God has done, and we are manifested as the sons of God, okay, and turned on a dime, and we go after and with that the head of our army is the Lord of hosts. That's why Jesus, okay, he's the head of the army. But make no mistake, you know, he's got a body. So where the head goes, the foot goes. The arm goes, you know. Because after we get into the whole idea of the garments, so we're going to be changed both earthly and spiritually. We are changed. This is the, and you got to believe this. you got to wrap your mind up because by faith, activates the physics of change. There's just no shortcuts. You need to believe in your heart. You need to meditate. You need to get it. God, the Holy Spirit is in you. He will change you. He will give you the mind of Christ. You can grab. There are people on the planet. People are pressing into this thing. By faith, you appropriate the promises of God. Don't let anybody sell you an intellectual gospel where it's just a nice story, but it isn't really boots on the ground and real tangible stuff in the heavenlies, okay? It is. And we need to believe that. We need to operate so that when we speak, be healed. We understand the power of words. We know who we are. This is all going to come together. So this thing about the garments, which is really interesting. I have to give you this little, I'm going to run out of time. This is the whole story between Esau and um, Isaac because Jacob, I'm sorry, Jacob and Esau and the birthright thing. People just don't understand the magnitude of what's going on and the typologies. Everybody is a type and a shadow. It's a typology. It's telling something much bigger. So it was always a choice between the birthright. There was a, there's, and I've done teachings on this on my YouTube. There's, a diff, there's two parts to this thing. There's a blessing and there's a birthright. One carried the wealth, that's the blessing. One carried the birthright, okay? Esau was really after, um, he, he thought he would take his, he really wanted the wealth, the, the, the physically, um, the wealth that Jacob, his father, had. Abraham, God made, as he said, he would Abraham, Isaac, very wealthy pre- kings on the earth, okay? And I wish we could wrap our mind around, and I don't have time for all this thing. So it was the choice between the wealth of Isaac and the land of Canaan. Esau, of course, decided to take the wealth and leave the land. Because he, you know. (laughs) Okay. Uh, 
because the land was already claimed by the Canaanites, that's another whole bunch of the story, these incredibly powerful hibernized races of people who had the enemy had brought in and hunkered down on the land that God wanted to originally give this tribe, this spinoff, this branch that he's going to grow now out of Jacob, uh, because the Canaanites were already there, and uh, according to the way Esau saw it, there was no way they were getting all kicked off the land anytime soon. So even if you got the land, how are you going to get it? Because if you could see, you know, one point says that we look like grasshoppers according to these giants. We got to unpack that. So many people have unpacked that. You just, just go... go Go find somebody who can teach you some of this stuff. Esau, um, but it says here, what had really happened was God had in mind from the beginning that his birthright should be the promise of sonship. See, in this new heaven and the new earth, this is the new birth, that we would become the sons of God. Again, we would get back to our first estate in the pre, um, we were foreknown, foreordained from the foundations of the world. So, the, in other words, the so-called land inheritance, which was, you know, what's that worth, was really the manifestation of the sons of God. Because our bodies are made of the dust of the ground. Adam was formed of the dust of the ground. But you can't think ground like, you know, when you out and put your plant. We are talking about elements, basic building blocks of life, powerful, powerful, powerful things Adam was formed of this and was manifested as a son of God at the very beginning. Adam's body was spiritual flesh. His earthly body manifested the glory of God. See, this is what we're going to have. When Jesus came back and his resurrected, after he was resurrected, his, his body, and this is why it is so important, people, it says to test your spirits. Because Jesus, we are going to have a body. We're not going to be floating around on little clouds. We are going to definitely have the best of all the elements in the whole cosmos <coughs> are going to come together and going to make this tabernacle a whole spiffy, you know, outer uh, vessel, or you know, I guess an earthen vessel, something that will house the new Jerusalem, our whole sonship from the Father, okay? So make no mistake about it. Now both of these have, uh, have a garment kind of concept or they're going to be changed. This is what he's going to change on a dime, okay? This is why people, it is so important because when the gig is up, the preaching of the gospel, if you're hearing me, choose you this day, choose life, choose eternal life, choose the new heaven and the new, what have you got to lose? Even Paul says, even if I'm wrong, you, it's a better bet, okay? I mean, there's no sense in hedging your bets. But not in a, in a flippant way. Because you need to love him. You need to obey your creator who is giving us. Believe me, we are at the top of the food chain of all his creation. This is an unbelievable deal that is free. What is it going to take you just to repent and say, okay, okay, so I had it wrong. So my, so my elders taught me wrong. So I, I you know, was a little arrogant. Uh, whatever it is. So I did really some really bad things. Well, oh well. He will totally forgive. The blood in the heaven on the mercy seat has covered it all. Just get it. But in this package, I'm telling you what, is the greatest forces that will ever, <coughs> the whole heavens and the earth will ever see. So we don't need to be afraid, this is part of this, of um, the tribulation, all these things. Satan has been so busy in the church just kind of strutting and stuff, showing everything that he's going to do. And we have most Jews bought into this concept of a rapture where they, they got to get taken out because, oh my gosh, there's no way. Are you kidding me? Daniel says, stand your ground. The <coughs> saints of the time of this will be strong and do exploits for God. And we're not just talking about, you know, winning your neighbor, little exploits. We are talking about some of the most powerful Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do, and greater works. I mean, we kind of wrap our mind around how big this thing is. So, because Enoch, and this is the whole thing. Oh, I can't even go into this, probably. I'm running out of time. Because what we have to understand, and this is the whole thing. This is, in the, this is because a lot of the typology, you have to understand the sun and the moon, and the, uh, uh, okay, so the heavenly planets, this, this stuff, this we just know, I mean, look at how the moon affects the tides on the earth, the water levels. We're made up of water. We have to understand something. A lot of these sun and moons, they, these went haywire, went AWOL. Okay, this is a lot of the problem. Um, and it can be unpacked, and I'm not going to do it tonight, but this is part of the keys. So who is represented in Mercury and Saturn and um, 
you know, Uranus, or, you know, I mean, some of these, Saturn and Jupiter. What's going on? And then they are huge principalities, and they influence the elements, the building blocks that, by the time it gets down to us, us in us. Okay, now this is a huge concept. I can't unpack this tonight. But see, Satan, what happened was when he fell, the garment, and this is, a, this is a quote from the Apocalypse of Abraham, and this is, this is something we have to understand, because see, when you read all this text, they're all saying the same thing, when you understand it. A lot of the, the people don't like the Apocrypha because it's very apocryphal, it's very hidden. But when you understand, <coughs> and I'm going to teach you the keys to understand what's going on on such a deeper level, not, we're not... Because see, Satan wants to fool you and he wants to trick you and he really wants you to act in the flesh. What Satan's really, he's trying to get the people of God to react to the judgment to the last days in the flesh where there's no power. Oh my gosh. It says the garment that was in heaven and was Satan's. Remember, he was a covering. He was a cherub angel. He had this unbelievable covering on him. His the things that made him up, the parts of the celestial and the terrestrial and everything that made him up, were beautiful. He was like a top dog. Okay, he was a morning star. We understand when you read Ezekiel with this understanding, you understand the garment that was in heaven was Satan's has been given or set aside for Abraham and his um, project. his offspring. See, that's us. See, this is the thing. This is, we are his, we are Satan's replacement. See, that whole part. When God has to roll up the heaven and the earth, he's, and, the, and the sun and the moon, and these things got to fall down. All that bad, um, AWOL, the fallen angels, and all the hybrids, and everything all through the ages that have a lot, <coughs> they're all just going bye bye. Those are the tears. That's what's going to get ripped up. You have to get rid of, that's the cleansing that's going to go on. And then lo and behold, we're going to shine like the lights in the firmament. We're going to (coughs) be the sun, the moon, and the stars. That was the dream that Joseph had that he told his brothers and his father. And then they all got really kind of freaked out, especially his brothers got really, what do you mean we're going to bow down to you? You're the, you know, um, he's saying that, that Abraham, no, 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 that Rachel, and this is their understanding, biblically, this is the Midrash understanding, that Jacob and, oh, I get Rachel, and they're 12, you know, we're going to become the new, and they're referred to as the new sun and in the new moon. Sun and moon, women are kind of the moon thing, and men are the sun thing, this, we won't go into that, okay? And the stars, the, the, the progeny, were going to inherit. And Azazel, that's another name for Satan, you got to understand all these epithets, lost his garments of life, his eternal, and uh, his robe, another way of saying this, of immortality, he became mortal, and Abraham gets it. So this thing is going to flip. Right now, we are wearing the, the garments of corruption and, immortal, and, and mortality. When death is swallowed up, it's going to turn on a dime. Satan, because it says that he is going to die the death of men. If you really study it in the end, people don't understand. He's been fallen and decomposing and coming down lower and lower on the whole totem pole. He's going to end up dying the death of men. And that's going to be it. We, on the other hand, we will ascend, which made me think. This, see, they package the whole fallen angel thing. Uh, you know, which is a big thing today. Uh, what are they calling them? the ascended masters or oh, the aliens? See, they're gonna try, they're gonna come back as like oh, we're aliens and we seeded you and we're just these much more advanced civilizations of people out there. You know, do you really thought you were alone in the universe? Well, no, but they're really just the category of the fallen angels. See, we just got to get keep the storyline straight and do not be deceived. Elect. Do not be deceived. Now, <clears throat> so you have to understand that this thing is going to flip-flop on a dime. And this is what the whole resurrection is about. And actually, this is all through the Hebraic literature and understanding. They all knew this from Adam and on. And what they really wanted to see in here, in this administration, because I have said that in Hebraic understanding, the six days is kind of divided into two and two and two. The first 2,000 years were the patriarchs, starting from Anna, you know, Adam and you know, Enoch and Noah and then Shem. And, him, and then it starts with, from Abraham on to when Jesus came, you have the time of, the, of um, 
the, 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 the nation of Israel, God called out a people, all the temple thing, and the Levitical priest and all that. And then the last two days, which we've been in, is the Messianic time. But see, what Jesus did, he sent the Holy Spirit. Now, this is what I need you to understand, because I really have five more minutes. This is, I always have way more than I can ever possibly. But what I want you to understand <clears throat> is that... We, because I have had a vision, I actually have, a, a, like this, I call it the activation. Or, you know, what do you want to call it? Activation, resurrection, uh, the, the mobilization, what, what's the other word I used uh, to be energized? Um, anointing, where I was doing exploits for God, but I couldn't have possibly been in a physical body or just stuck down here in this terrestrial. I mean, I knew I could stop a, a bullet with my hand. I mean, I could just put a bullet, I could put my hand out. And the bullet, it just, it had to stop. I couldn't. I had to, you know, remember the movie in The Matrix and he could do that? Where does that come from? I'm not making it up, people. That's biblical, okay? That's biblical. Um, okay, I just had to throw that out there. Um, there was one point that I really wanted to make before I had to leave. <clears throat> okay, in the garments. See, Enoch, and this is what's, re- when he was translated, they, God just really kind of gave him his heavenly garments, sort of like ahead of time. And the same thing with Elijah. That's sort of what went on with these guys. They were just such firebrands. It says in the, in the Hebraic Midrashes, the earth just couldn't contain them. God just had to really trans, translate them. It wasn't, they had to just be changed, okay? So they're really alive. They haven't tasted the physical death yet. But they, uh, and, and they're just really living in the New Jerusalem. And, and we have to understand the city, oh my gosh, the physics of this thing, the city, oh my gosh, there's just too much. Okay, so what was the main thrust of what I wanted to say? Oh, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, okay? Because Jesus came down, that Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the third person, that seed is in us. That is the huge mystery. That's what Paul saw. That's what's ignited the early church. They understood now. They were changed in the new Jerusalem, in the spiritual category. Okay? The flesh could be covered even under the old covenant, and that was fine. But now, the spirit of man, the soul of man, is totally changed and empowered to be operating on a spiritual level higher than the fallen angels. We are above them now. This we need to reclaim. This is what is our understanding that we're going to be operating on, especially when Satan makes his move. I believe that God is going to change a certain group of people, the elect at the last days, the manifestation of the sons of God. He says, we're going to be fighting alongside angels. We're going to judge angels. This thing is going to, he's not just going to leave us here. <laughs> Let the enemy roll over. It's like a tank. I don't think so. I told you, I said, it's going to change on a dime. And like dust, that's what God says, just blow away. Because, see, light is greater than darkness. Light up a dark room and boom, it just, the darkness just, so quickly. <laughs> it's amazing. But there's just a quick thing we need to understand about the Holy Spirit. This was the promise from the Father that even from the olden days they understood that he was going to send the advocate, the relief, <clears throat> that this anointing, Okay, because the word Jesus Christ, it's not like his first and last name. People got it's Yahushua Hamashiach. He is a person. This is very important to understand. He came and took on our earthly tabernacle that when it was resurrected was just like the new earth's going to be. Okay, he walked through walls. He just did all sorts of stuff. He went down to Hades. Okay, and the new Jerusalem. Okay, <clears throat> this is in the category of the Holy Spirit. How much time have I got? This advocate, this seed remains in you, and it is the anointing, okay, the Christos. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit is in us. It will teach us all truth. It will lead us in the way that we should go. The Spirit of truth will testify about Yahushua. This is the Spirit of truth that is given to us. You have this anointing, and you and you know the truth. This um, advocate, this anointing, this seed, these are all seed, is in us. So I say, people, let's get ready. Let's, let's be anticipatory. Let's believe that we are going to be clothed with power from on high. 
And we are going to do this thing. And we are going to rid the world of these tares. And we're going into a peaceable kingdom, a millennial kingdom, where we're going to see with the government of God how awesome God really had it planned all along. So in that note, uh, good night. You, you know, Yahushua's name. Love you. Bless you. And may his face shine upon you. Amen.